Yeah, I think I think it's important to realize that we're not setting any rules, that we're revealing the rules. This is kind of like uh, in science, you start to explore things and then you discover certain truths and then you see where they match and where they don't match. And as you continue to explore, you continue to stress test these truths you start to break them down more and more and more and they either become more solid or <laughs> as uh, Nassim Taleb would say anti-fragile meaning they just become stronger as you stress them more or the bottom kind of falls out and this is when there's a paradigm shift so I think it's extremely important to realize that we're, we're not setting any rules we're simply unveiling these rules and the, the reason we do this is because as human beings, we need to standardize things. And I think it's important that we realize where a standard comes from and uh, what it's there to do. For example, when I was teaching movement, the way that I would explain where a standard came from, I would say, first and foremost, if whatever you're doing physically right now matches your biomechanics, then you're most likely moving in the right direction. Now, what is something that's biomechanically correct, quote unquote? Well, it's something that when you apply force, it's efficient, it's effective. It's when uh, you wanna move from point A to point B, you can do it not in one way, but in an infinite number of ways. And then you can choose which one is the best depending on the context or uh, the desired outcome that you're looking for. So biomechanics is important. Biomechanics, when it comes to uh, basic human behavior, is our actions. It's the way that we respond to the world. So that's one side of creating a standard. Then on the other end of creating a standard, there is beauty. And this is where the beauty of something is more of the artistic approach. And this is where when you look for beauty, you usually see on the other side very high level biomechanical prowess. So beauty and mechanics go hand in hand. That's why the great artists, they understood science and they understood art. Like Leonardo da Vinci, uh, he, he was way more than an artist that had a certain stroke. He was also a scientist and he, he, was, he was the person who was able to explain anatomy at a whole new level. So it's really important that when we think about standards, first and foremost, it's based on the observation of our mechanics and the natural adaptation that occurs into those mechanics. And then on the other side, the beauty. And then the context and where they meet, this can be a game or a sport, that's where rules are developed so people can participate in a way that is fair. And what is fair? Fair is being able to meet each other right in the middle, but in a way where you can compete. This happens in nature all the time. There are no rules that have been set by someone external to nature. Nature creates those rules themselves. And sometimes those rules are influenced by the temperature that's outside or by the time of the year. Now we're, we're looking at our own calendar. And at times, one group will win over the other and you kind of fluctuate back and forth. And this is kind of like the heartbeat or the breath of nature. And this happens in movement and it happens in our, in our actions. So when we're thinking about setting standards, it's extremely important that we think about the biomechanics, our actions, our physical expression, that we think about the highest expression of beauty. And then the rules are the anchor of the standard that allows us to participate with those two sides. And when there are no rules, at least no rules that we are aware of, then what we're doing is we're creating a new game, a new sport, a new movement, a new practice, a new way of doing things, a new paradigm, a new base. And this is where now we need to step back a little bit and we need to think about if a standard is the product of how we behave, our actions, our movement, our biomechanics, the beauty of that expression and the rules that have either naturally or formally been developed there. Now, we also need to look at how did we get there? Well, when it comes to human behavior, we know that there's a natural progression. We put someone into a certain environment and we don't tell them anything. Over time, they will adapt. That's a natural adaptation. That's a natural progression. They 
naturally standardize. And then once that has occurred, we can look back at how they naturally adapted and we can see points in time that are very evident that a change was created. And in those changes that were created, we can develop progressions. We can develop standardized ways of sharing what we saw. And that's the formal progression. Now we don't just put people in an environment, but we also give them rules and we tell them how to navigate that environment. And then finally, we have the, the creative progression, which is on the tail end of the formality. That's when we start to push the limits so far, we're at the edges of what is possible that we need to creatively change things. For example, in gymnastics, I mean, I was just at a gymnastics meet this, this past weekend and uh, I got to see the same equipment that I saw and competed on 20 years ago, but the technology has slightly changed. A little bouncier here, the material is a little bit different. It allows for people to reach a higher level of formal expression within this practice. So that's where I think it's really important to just be aware of how things are set <laughs> rules are created or standards are met and then what can we do around that standard to not ever become stagnant but to continue to unfold and this is where our consciousness our awareness is the space that allows us to see what is happening <laughs>